All right, guys. <clears throat> I wonder where Jamie is. I wonder where Jamie is, right? Where's dad? He's not there. He's not there. Where's Jamie? Hmm? We're not mad about it. We're, we're just need to find him, right? Oh, it was really nice outside today. I bet you I know he was outside. Someone's grilling. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. found him. Great day today, guys. First day of grilling. So I decided to do it at night. I'm just cracking open my Viking grill here, and I've got some chicken grilling right here for my risotto dish. This is the bomb ditty of grills, I have to tell you, this Viking Viking grill. Hey, how are you guys? Those are my friends beeping at me. <laughs> See? You never leave me alone. All right, I think I'm ready. Cut off the grill. This is that beautiful Triton ceramic burner back there. All right. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Let's go, boys. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, hello, hello, hello. All right. So we had a couple of complaints about music, so we're gonna take the music down just a little bit. Welcome Friday night to the kitchen of moi. Uh, tonight, guys, I'm wearing my Brooklyn. You notice that? This is for New York. This is for New York, it's where my people are. So, um, Tribute, sending strength and positive energy to these places that need it. So New York is one of those places and I'm here to support and send love that way. Um, we are gonna get through this, right? So this is for New York. Cheers to New York City tonight. All right, here we go. But now you're gonna get cooking. And I'm gonna wear my disco apron. Why not? It's Friday night, guys. It's Friday night. If I'm gonna have a dance party, for one, I'm gonna have it in my house because nobody needs to see this house in public. I used to be a pretty Friday, good dancer. Friday night. You know what? I think I am still a pretty good dancer. I just haven't done it. The first thing I'm gonna do is go out and dance. Maybe we'll have a big old dance party when this is done. But anyhow, tonight we are featuring risotto. So this is some risotto rice. So if there's some chefies out there, please forgive me because I'm about to give risotto a classic risotto, um, a new set of clothes, so to speak. So this is our Boreo rice. You'll find it in the supermarket. It's a short grain white rice, and it's made um, and used, not specifically, but more than, uh, more than average times for risotto. There's also cannaroli rice that's on the shelf in the Italian section usually, that you can also use for risotto. Um, there's also um, lots of different grains you can kind of make risotto type dishes with. Um, we are going to make risotto tonight. So this is our Borio rice. So let's go because it's an 18 minute process. All right, here we go, kids. All right, that's a good idea. You know, it's Friday. It's Friday. Again, I'm not a drinker, but Let's try it. And you're gonna need a little wine for the risotto, so. Right, okay, so first thing you wanna do when you're making risotto, guys, is you wanna think about the entire process, right? It's not just throwing rice in a pan and you know leaving it there and walking away. There's actually, when I first learned how to make risotto, 
I was in Italy and I worked in a restaurant called San Domenico and I knew how to make risotto because of culinary school and uh, all of that prior to going to living in Italy. But making it in an Italian restaurant where they're known for their risotto is just a little bit intimidating. But I learned from a great chef, his name was Valentina Marcatelli, and uh, we were in Bologna at San Domenico restaurant in a little town called Imola. And uh, it's where uh, I really learned a lot about Italian cuisine and fell in love with Italy. So I spent a long time there, almost two years. And I actually got to make risotto for several very famous people while I was there. Unbeknownst to them that it was the American in the kitchen making them their dinner. So I'm going to teach you guys how I learned. It's a very interesting way. It's mostly through sound and feel. So we're just going to get started because it takes 18 minutes. So I have and always should have, everyone should have some simmering stock on the, on the range. So on the Viking range right here, I've got the stock stimmer, uh, simmering. So not boiling just about the simmer. So that's where we got to go there. On this side, I've got about, let's say a half a cup of leeks and a quarter cup of really good olive oil. Now, you notice that the heat is not too high. I want to sweat these leeks just a little bit. I don't want to burn them. I don't want to really brown them either. But we're going to go through the toasting process and really that's the most important thing when you're making risotto is that you toast the rice properly. It's all about getting each individual grain toasted and browned on all sides because it's going to allow the pores to open up on the rice and basically start accepting the hot liquid that you're going to start utilizing and incorporating into your rice dish. So. You can use onion, you could use a little bit of onion and garlic, uh, any kind of onion. I just happen to have a leek and I'm gonna twist the dish around and then all the chefs out there and all the Italians, the true Italians that are like, how can he do this to the risotto? I'm doing it. So it's a twist, right? So my, my lesson tonight is to teach you guys that you can mess with cooking. Just because you see a recipe, if you have an idea that can make the recipe a little bit more interesting, and a little bit more daring, guess what? You just created a recipe. So never let a recipe intimidate you unless it's like this is exactly what you want or the person wants. Remember that if you cook a recipe, you can change it to your liking or if you have an idea, you can make it better. So recipes are like fantastic things to have for those of you that need to follow, but I wanna encourage you, and maybe this dish will encourage you, to open up your mind a little bit about expanding that recipe. Does that make sense? And these times, you can utilize a lot of the ingredients that you might have around the house. For example, today I had some red pepper, I had some beans, and you know, everything started to come together. I'm not gonna give it away, but everything started to come together when I thought about, hmm, what am I gonna do with this risotto to make it interesting? I've had me some classic risotto, and I love it. Don't. Don't, I respect a classic risotto like no other. Sometimes the plainer and the more simple it is, the better. But tonight I'm gonna mess with it. Why? Because it's Friday night, guys. It's time to party. It's time to get up and get some happy going. So, look how my leeks have started to sweat. And again, I have a wonderful Viking pan. Um, they are on the Viking website. They have an unbelievable collection of pots and pans now. But you see how beautifully sweated those are? There's even a little liquid there that says, I'm sweating, I'm sweating. So these guys are all in the pool, right? All the leeks are in the pool tonight, but I'm also gonna add some rice to the pool. So this is gonna add a lot of people to the pool. These, the rice, unfortunately, will not be social distancing tonight. They're gonna come together. So hopefully this will be us when this is all over. So it's a cup of rice. So this is a cup of rice, but I'm gonna show you that it's really a handful of rice per person. So I'm cooking for two tonight, but I'm gonna leave a little bit extra. So I'm gonna go with five handfuls right here. Why? Why? Because tomorrow I'm gonna make some risotto cakes mm. for breakfast. Mm. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna mold them tonight, let the rice get cold. And then tomorrow morning in a buttered olive oil pan, maybe even in my oven, I'm gonna put those risotto cakes in there, maybe saute a little bit of spinach or some kimchi on top, because I like kimchi, maybe you don't. And then I might poach an egg over the top of that and call it breakfast. How delicious does that sound? Maybe some bacon. For brunch. Saturday is brunch. Sat it's brunch. brunch. Maybe I'll do it for you guys tomorrow. Okay, why not? Why not? All right, so 
I'm going to get very serious about this lesson, guys, because it's important that I want you guys to understand it like I understood it. So I'm going to bring up my heat just a little bit more on my range here, and I'm going to begin the toasting process. So the key to the toasting process, I'm actually going to grab me a paddle because the paddle really helps me out with this. So you want to keep moving the rice. Now, I'm a little bit of a weirdo. You may have already figured that out, those who have been watching, in the best of ways, of course. But I like to mostly spin the rice to the right. I don't know, it's just positive to me, right? So I'm always using the paddle to spin the rice and move the rice around the pan. Now, you don't have to get too crazy, too crazy, but if you start to see that the, the, the leeks are browning, that's okay, but you don't want them to get burnt. So the best way to do that is to keep the rice moving. And you can hear it. Put your ear to it, Rich. If you can hear it, wait, here we go. Oh, no, that's a fire, that's a fire engine. That's not what I meant. We live in the Question. city. Question. Question, can you make risotto balls with that leftover rice? You can make risotto balls anytime you want. How yes, much you can. would you have? Arancini, yes. Would you sure. need to make a lot more rice though? To it do that? Remember, one handful per person, right? So I've got mm -hmm. two handfuls tonight, that's Rich and I. Mm -hmm. I threw in another three, what does that mean? Enough rice for three people, so that's what you can utilize. So what each handful, if you want to make how many rice balls, mm -hmm. arancini balls, throw in four or five handfuls. It, it really depends on the, the amount of people you're cooking for. Okay. I need to focus now on this process, because it really is truly the most important. So you need to move the rice around. So when you first begin paddling the rice, folks, it's going to feel almost, I don't want to say heavy because it's not heavy like a weight, but it's a little bit, and not difficult, it's just a little bit like heavy behind the palate. Like, it's like you could feel the weight of the rice. As you start toasting the rice, you'll start to know when it's time to add the stock. By listening to the rice, it'll start to crackle like popcorn soon. But it also will get easier to spin. There's your big, big tip. The easier the rice begin, uh, the easier the rice is to spin and turn, the more it's getting coated and those, those pores are allowing a little bit of like openness and it's getting more smooth. Right now, I wish you could feel it because it's getting super light, like airy is the word, airy. You could notice those leaks are browning just a bit, which is fine. But if you really can hear it, I hope you can, but if you can, it's really starting to hiss and sizzle. That's the sign you're looking for, three things. You're looking for a little bit of color, actual color on the rice that's giving it its you know, actual toast in color. You're also looking to feel, so you're feeling the weight of the rice and behind the paddle it gets really, really, really light. And then you're gonna be smelling, right? You're gonna be smelling the smell of actual toast. It smells like toast, and that's what we're doing here. So all these grains are really, really moving around so easy that they're almost flying out of the pan. And you could really start to hear the rice crackle. And I'm gonna move this around just a little bit more. And when it gets super light, and I know it's ready to um, accept my first level of moisture, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of white wine. So I'm almost there. I know by looking at it that I don't want it to go too far and toasty, but I want it to get super light and super airy. Any questions thus far? No. Comments? People are loving the pans. You guys, you guys, how you feeling? You feeling the love? Can you feel the love is what I want to know. Can you feel the love? Because I'm feeling it. Right, Some people guessed by my panning of ingredients that you're making a... I don't want to know. <laughs> you guys, don't guess. Come on, don't run for me. Um, I want it to be a surprise. Okay, so... Uh, did you soak the rice? No the soaking. No uh -uh. soaking. No soaking. No soaking. Great thing about this dish, guys, is that if you wanted to take... So risotto takes 18 minutes. 18 minutes. If you wanted to stop... We're going to talk about that later. I'm not going to confuse you. Anyway, the rice is beautifully toasting. It's super light, it's like flying around the pan. I can hear the sizzle that I'm looking for, but most importantly, I'm looking at that color. And I'm like, okay, it's time to hit it with some wine. So I've got some wine here. Here's the next sound I want you to hear, ready? Sizzle, sizzle. 
that's a strong sound, but it also told you that the pot was really, really, really nice and hot. So what type of rice can you do this with? Because someone's asking, can you do it with any type of white rice? No, and I can't. could even say no. No, so you must have not tuned in from the beginning. Young, what type young, of rice can man you use? Or young lady. Carnarole rice is classically used and arborio rice are classically used for risotto. This isn't gonna work with basmati long grain rice. It has to be a short grain rice. Guys, this is another really, really valuable lesson right here in making risotto. Once you've done that and you start to see that the, the liquid is starting to bubble, this right here is your starch. This is all the starch that the rice was letting out and it's gonna start drinking that, really, really drinking that. But this starch is your friend. You'll notice when I move the rice, you'll see it pooling on the bottom over there. You want that starch to always be thickening right you want it to always look at that so when you when we get further on in the dish you're going to start to see stripes you can see them now almost when i move that rice you see that that's the point when i know that i need to add more liquid so on the um on the range over here i've got my stock simmering over here and you always must use a hot stock with a hot rice if you put cold stock in hot rice it's going to ruin the entire dish so if you'll notice over here, you see those stripes I talked about before? Do you guys see those? Rich, can you see them on yeah, the camera? Yeah, I can totally see them. Okay, camera. so that's what I'm looking for. And that's always gonna tell me when to add. You can see when the rice doesn't move as fast. Right, it's getting starchy and thick. So on my right here, I've got hot stock, and I'm constantly gonna feed this rice stock until it tells me that it's ready to go. So classically, this dish will take you exactly eight, uh, 18 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes to do from beginning to end. It might when you started toasting the rice. Yes. Yes. So, okay. so this is good. This is the elongated version because I'm explaining it to you. I'm going to play with the fire on my range just so I can really get through the process. I would be doing this a lot faster and a lot higher heat if I wasn't explaining it to you guys as well. But I need to come across clearly so you understand it. Once you master this dish once, it's so easy. You make this dish for any one of your friends for dinner, trust me, they're gonna think you're an amazing chef, right? I get away with people thinking that about me by making risotto. So, this is a dish that can be really versatile. You can do so many things. I'll give you a couple of ideas. I've used radicchio and different kinds of cheese. You can add different kinds of proteins. You can do caramelized onions. You can do shrimp. You can do scallops. You can do sliced uh, beef. You can do foie gras. You can do pate. You can do, I mean, how many things can you do? Everything. Risotto is one of those dishes that even if you wanted to like You've got some things in your refrigerator these times that are like a little meh, right? For example, I had a little meh corn in my refrigerator. So look what I did. In my Viking range, I roasted it. So I've got some roasted corn, okay? So remember to remind me about that roasted corn, but this Don't forget about roasted the corn. Yes, don't forget about the corn. Thank you, Rich, for that slow-mo. Rich, you have a voice like, you know what you should do? You should do, I wish you would start a series of like bedtime tapes, like reading a story, like for us people who don't sleep at night. This, this, I could do that. You have a voice that's so like relaxing. It's lulling, crazy. lulling. I'm like half asleep over here listening to your voice. Okay, so no, not, it's not true. So guys, look, we're back to the point where it's saying, hey, Jamie, I need more stock. Why? Anybody know why? Right, I correct. Because I see the stripes. Right, here I we go. Why. Here we go. So we're gonna add more stock. All right, so keep adding stock until the rice becomes, again, al dente. You guys have watched me a couple of times know what al dente means. It means to the tooth. When you bite into a grain and it feels like just a little bit of a bite. I have to tell you that I am so thrilled as a chef right now. I'm real proud because I see all of this starch right here coming out of the rice. All of this is getting nice and thick. That occurs because of the way we toasted it, okay? If you don't toast the rice enough or you don't toast the rice at all, you're not gonna have a very creamy risotto. Risotto should look like a wave on the plate. When you plate it, it should move like a wave. The best way to get a creamy risotto is to move it, right? 
Now when it has a lot of stock in it like this, it's kind of difficult to get it moving the way you want. But as you can see, I slowly start to like get my movement going. This is gonna help the starches come out of the rice a little bit more as you continue cooking this dish. It's usually about four or five times that I incorporate liquid that I know I'm getting very close to it being cooked. But on my Viking range here, I've got a very high heat going. I'm using the range at the highest capacity right now. And I have to tell you, it's amazing because it really gives me a very hot product right here, which is what I want. So I'm gonna keep moving the rice around and allowing it to drink up that liquid. All right, guys, any questions now? Anybody wanna say something? So Anybody? people are making some risotto tomorrow, so. Okay. So is this, are the steps helping you guys? You could just send out hearts or thumbs up if the, if the steps are actually helping. I feel are, like I'm making sense. Yes, they are definitely helping. Okay, here we go. I also feel like there is a de slight delay. So we get like, we'll get hearts in about a minute and then people will start saying, I love the idea. Okay, great. So we're gonna continue this process. Now this is the point now where you can start moving the rice a little bit faster, a little bit faster because the rice has drunk up some of that liquid and the starches are getting thick. So it splashes around in the beginning, but as it thickens up is when you really want to start moving it and really start like creaming it up. And that's how I keep, you know, I really get into it. This is my arm workout. I'm totally getting like my tricep jam in right now. So this is me moving that risotto, right? Here's the great part about this news I'm about to tell you. Again, about 18 to 20 minutes is how long it takes from beginning to end. I'm already working at it for, normally if you weren't on with me, this is about, I would say, eight minutes, right? I can stop this process, big tip, right now, and I can spread it out on a sheet pan and cool it off, put it in my refrigerator, and use it throughout the week if I wanted to make risotto another time, or if you're making risotto for a, uh, uh, an event and you want to pre-cook your rice, you just took away nine minutes, 10 minutes of the process. You can allow it to cool down naturally, put it back in your refrigerator, keep it in the refrigerator, and when you're ready to make it on that Saturday night in your pretty dress, you don't have to stand in front of the stove like me sweating to the oldies right here. You can, you can save a lot of time. That is a big tip in making risotto. So here we go. So I allowed myself to talk, and this became really, really nice and creamy and thick. You see the way I can move it around almost like wet cement, almost like wet sand? That's like beautiful right there. That is beautiful. I can even start making little shapes in it. And it's saying, hey chef, yo, I need more liquid. Why? Because of the stripes. There they are again. And I'm gonna continue to add more liquid. Now as you get closer to cooks, to when it's ready, you can start adding a little bit more liquid and get a little bit more daring. Um, get a little bit more daring. And this will be, um, Sorry, I clicked my range off over there. This can be, um, what I'm trying to say is the more liquid you add at this point, the more you can tell how much starch you've got swimming around in there. And it really is, I have to tell you, I'm really excited about this dish right now because it's, I, know it, I, I know I nailed it, right? And it's like so good when you know you did it right. And I'm really glad I'm doing it right in front of you guys because that would look really bad. So, so I'm just gonna answer a question really quick. Yes, this is an apron I made for Jamie. Oh, this yes. is Jamie's personal apron that he's, I'm not going to sell. Rich said to me, this is if, his. if I made an apron for you, this is what it would be. And I said, okay, why? He said, because of your disco ways. On the, disco so this ways. is my disco ball apron. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, are the waves. I have this tattoo. Show them. Show the people. Show our friends. So Richard, you see the wave right there? Wave. You see that eye, that yeah. eyeball right there? That's me because I wear this eyeball and I, I happen to have the Larita Blues. So he put a tattoo on his arm and found this fabric and it reminded him of me. So isn't that sweet? I know. Costume change. I know. I just, I just flipped it and reversed it. If that music was on right now, I'd be really happy. All right. So here we go, guys. We're going back to the dish. So I can't believe it's uh, so rich. Is there no cheese or butter yet? No. There's Not nothing, yet. There's nothing in it yet. All this is, folks, is some stock. I use chicken stock, a little bit of wine, some olive oil and leeks that were uh, 
sauteed until they were translucent. And then rice, that's it. That's all it is at this point. Now, this is a really lovely point for risotto. If you wanted to just finish it just now, and you put a little bit of like caramelized onion or some parsley, kept it really simple with some Parmigiano Reggiano and butter, and just served it like that, I'm happy as, I can't even tell you how happy I am. I love me a simple risotto, don't get me wrong, it's kind of my favorite. You get me some white, I mean really, if you're in Italy and you're, you're lucky enough to be where I was, um, they had white truffle, you know, that's where they found them in the, in the hills there. So we would have this with a little bit of shaved ends of white truffle from service. I mean, it was like really heavy. So, okay, here we go. I know from being me that I've only got a few minutes left on this dish. And I know I only have one more addition of stock. So this is going to be my last addition of stock because I can tell that we're getting very close to being done. So this dish will be done in approximately, I don't know, five minutes or so. So again, I'm allowing the stock to get absorbed into the rice. I'm gonna just try one little morsel here. And it is the perfect, this might be the best risotto I've ever made in my life. Maybe I should talk my brains out while I make risotto from now on. Does anybody want me to talk my brains out? I don't have much left. But um, all right, here we go. So this is looking really stunning. I know that it's going to drink up that rice and it's perfect, so I'm going to allow it. You are allowed to go and boil yourself to perfection. So here's the twist. Let's go back over here to my cutting board. So on my Viking grill, on my Viking grill, I had some chicken. So I'm just gonna slice some of this chicken. I don't know, just for the heck of it. All right, I'm gonna slice it. Just to have it, you know, just to have it. Okay, here we go, back to the risotto. I don't know what I was doing over there. I was getting a little crazy with chicken. I was getting a little nutso. All right, so this is my risotto. I know I still have a couple of minutes left to go. I'm gonna really move that to the right here and get it nice and creamy and beautiful. At the end here is when I'm gonna give it my most muscle. This is where my elbow grease is gonna kick in. Again, once that liquid gets absorbed, I'm really gonna start to like beat it up a little bit. You know, I'm gonna give it a little old fashioned beating. You know, every now and then I gotta like let out a little bit of steam. And again, so this I use is it about risotto. five servings to recap. Yeah, this is about oh, five, five six, six servings, six five servings. to six servings. But I made extra because I am extra and I need some extra because I'm going to make another dish with it. Copy? Mm. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to really start moving it. This is my last licks right here. This is when I know I can make it super, super creamy. <clears throat> and then we can finish the risotto. I do like arancini. I know. Rich loves arancini. I love arancini. Yeah, How many know, people love you know arancini? Who makes a great arancini is, um, is Chef Jackie in New York, in our New York City showroom. Chef Jackie nails an arancini. Um, she's good at that. Mm -hmm. So I make, an, I make a good arancini as well, but you know, some people specialize in it. I'm going to give that one to her. But um, over here, we're almost ready. If you use mushrooms, will they absorb too much liquid? No, the mushrooms are actually going to let out liquid. When you mm -hmm. cook a mushroom, what happens? It leaches out liquid, right? You're gonna finish it with anything. So so guys, just so you know, right now, this can go so many different ways. Thank you for talking about mushrooms because that's like a porcini mushroom risotto is very classic as well. You can add your mushrooms at this point. Have everything pre-cooked if you want. Right now, if I wanted to throw in some raw shrimp or some little baby mussels into this jam right here, boy, would that be good. But you could literally cook them right in this, just as long as you have a little bit of water left, a little bit of stock left, to do that in, you can actually cook, um, you can cook some shellfish in here too. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take this in a very strange direction right now, because that's Jamie Larita, right? I'm gonna take this in a, you know, Rich mentioned earlier that he wanted Mexican food. He's like, I have a taste for Mexican food. So I was like, okay. I knew what I was doing tonight, and I'm like, why can't I make this more Mexican? I miss going Italians out to Mexico. Just, all the Italians I just miss hung up. going out to Mexico. <laughs> all the Italians just hung up. They were like, okay, screw this. Um, so we're taking it in a little bit of a Mexican direction, right? So I thought, why not? Why not? 
Who's going to yell at me? Who's going to care? Somebody tells me, oh, I don't like you with what you did to that risotto. Oh, I'm sorry. Guess what? I'm doing it. So I'm going to add in, first and foremost, a little bit of my favorite, favorite, favorite thing is mezcal. So I'm going to throw in a little drizzle of mezcal. Mezcal? A little bit of mezcal. Why not? Why not? And then I'm going to take my lime over here and I'm going to zest a little bit of lime into my risotto. All the chefs that are on here, all the foodies that are on here that are like, oh my God, Chef Jamie, what would he do to the risotto? I am so lime sorry. Guess what? Live with it, kids, because it's a good idea. Then I had some red beans. I mean, doesn't this look Mexican, guys? Yummy. Doesn't it already feel Mexican? I'm gonna add some red kidney beans to it. I'm also gonna add a little bit of chili powder to it because why the heck not, right? And then I'm gonna add in some roasted peppers to the family here. All the Mexicans are cheering right now that are watching. They're all like, hell yeah, Chef Jamie. Then I'm gonna go into my range and I'm gonna pull out my roasted corn that I did so lovingly on Convection Roast. And I'm gonna throw in my Yum. corn. Okay, why not? Oh, I should have saved a little bit for my garnish, for my pretty. Okay, so, here we go. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of pat of butter in there. And I'm gonna toss that around. I have a little bit of stock left over over here because I want it to be extra juicy. I'm going to throw in a little bit more of that stock. Rich, I, I love you to death, but if you put that phone under my arm one more time, you know what? That was, you're a, not that was, that was a really great shot, though. <laughs> you're not getting, I mean, oh, everybody okay, has to admit that was really clever. If it was for the shot, if it was for the shot, listen, if it was value, if there was value in it, then I apologize. If it was art, people really felt like their. They're part of the risotto right now. Oh, okay, good. All right, then you're forgiven. You're forgiven. As long as the people care about the shot, I'm good. It looks delicious. Okay, great. So again, with that spoon, by the way, is amazing. You think I didn't do that on purpose, folks? <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to add in some Mexican cheese and a little Parmesan mixture because it's that kind of dish. Okie dokie. Look at that, and then I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of cilantro. Oh my goodness. And then I'm yeah. gonna put in a squeeze of lime, cause why not? Speaking of why not, where's my wine? Oh, here it is. Cheers, Rich. Thanks for the filming. Thanks for you guys for watching. I'm gonna plate it now. I get thirsty from talking. Here's your risotto, finito, And I'm gonna promise you it's gonna be absolutely delicious. So this is vegetarian. Right now, if you wanted to throw in some spicy shrimp, you could do that. Hold. I'm gonna get me a bowl over here. Checking it out. Rich is going to come on the other side over here and show you guys how I'm going to plate this. Here we go. Here we go, friends. Here we go, friends. Uh, so to answer some questions, I clean up. Um, so uh, you don't think uh, like I don't clean up? No, I mean Jamie definitely helps clean up, right, but right. I definitely um, we we I will. Um, I mean I, I it's here's part of my you know what it's lesson. part of it's part of it. Uh, hey, I'm gladly clean lesson. up. I gladly There's clean no up. There's no I in team. I I gladly clean up though, don't I? <laughs> you have oh, you to. Oh, you do. Maybe yeah. I should help. All right, good. I usually I'm do. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay. That was a question. That was a fan question. A fan question. Hey guys, guess what? Remember the chicken I grilled? Remember the chicken I grilled? So what did you season the chicken with? Lemon pepper, 
uh, just lemon pepper and a, and a little lime zest. And a little lime zest. Teamwork, people are commenting, teamwork. Teamwork, it takes there's a no team. I in team. It takes a team. If you, if you have someone that thinks they are a one person team, mm -hmm. guess what? They're not. It takes a village to do beautiful things. Mm -hmm. it takes a village. Am I correct? It takes a freaking village. All right, so speaking of that, we are team stay home club, right? And we're gonna protect ourselves and we're gonna stay at home. I'm just putting a little bit of chili. And we have to remind ourselves, take a picture before you eat it. Yes, because Rich did that last night. A little drizzle of, even if I wanted to do, just had an idea, just came in my head. This is how we do it. A little drizzle of chili oil. Look at that. Look at that, guys. That's a lot of drizzle. Well, you know we like it spicy. Mmm. There you pretty. go. So pretty. Okay, so this is the risotto for tonight. I took a classic and I made it bombastic. I guess I threw a bunch in it. Rich has a question. Do you put the copper pots in the dishwasher? Hell to the no. No. <laughs> yeah, I never do. No, hand wash. I hand wash everything. All the pots. Hand wash all the pots. If you have good pots and pans, even if you have good equipment, take care of it. A little bit of soap. Right, even what he knows. Look, what do you tell him? Look at this guy. Stay there. Stay, boy. Stay. Mm. Hey, sit. Sit. Oh. oh. <laughs> He's the best. All right, guys. <laughs> getting back to the risotto. It's Friday night. We let this go a little bit longer than normal. But a round of applause for this risotto dish. We made it Mexican. I have to taste it. I mean, it would be wrong of me not to taste this. So short that. grain brown rice, would that work? A question is being asked. Damn, is that good? Short grain, yes, you can use short grain brown rice. Try it. I never have, I'm sure it will work. Use farro if you want. Farro. Farro would work. Um, I just took a, a classic risotto dish and I made it something weird. And it, believe me when I tell you, it's absolutely delicious. You guys, I have to say something before we leave. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are really desperately trying a place to put these videos. And I thought, why can't I just put these on Watch What's Cooking? Duh. So I talked to my sister Caroline today and we're gonna try to put these videos on the Watch What's Cooking um, YouTube. So if you guys please subscribe to that channel, you'll start to see these dishes and probably stuff that Caroline is gonna cook at home in the interim while we can't be together. We just decided, screw it. Let's just throw it up on YouTube, right? So there it is. So if you wanna see this recipe again, if you wanna show your friends, you can go to Watch What's Cooking on YouTube. And if you've not subscribed yet, Caroline Manzo and I are coming for you. But um, all joking aside, I wish you guys love, peace, I love cooking for you guys at night. I feel energy from you and I'm sharing energy with you. That's what this is all about. And together, if we do this right, we can stay home, stay healthy, be very, very careful when you're out there. You know, quite honestly, with all the new information, you don't really know too much. All you know is what you can do to stay safe in your own house. So I encourage you to stay safe, um, be happy, give each other a little extra hug, a little extra love, stand up in the morning and just thank God you are alive and smile because this is all gonna get better. Again, shout out to Brooklyn, New York. Our hearts are with you. We hope that this will start going down from this second, second on, that everything gets better. Thanks for tuning in. We love you. Have a good Friday night and a good weekend. Uh, love you guys. Peace out.